Hello and welcome to Unite and Prosper, where we will not be divided or conquered. And while you're watching this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and share, share, share. In the 1950s, Venezuela was the fourth richest country in the world per capita. Today, they're ranked at 156th, which is just one behind Uzbekistan, which is ranked at 155th. Venezuela went from one of the richest countries in the world to today where citizens are breaking into zoos to kill animals just so they can eat due to no food being at their once very well stocked grocery stores. Well, what happened you might ask? Well, if you don't already know, let me give you a quick history recap. Hugo Chavez served as the Venezuela president from 1999 till his death in 2013. Chavez helped formed the United Socialist Party of Venezuela. And when Chavez took over Venezuela, the socialist government took over the once free markets like food industries, housing, education, healthcare, things like that. And then as the decline of their finances started to accelerate in only one decade's time, Chavez declared an economic war on the upper class, blaming them of taking all the goods from the lower class. So does this sound familiar? Blaming the food industries, the top 1%, private health care. Can we say Kamala and the Democratic Party? <laughs> well, Kamala isn't just playing the blame game, blaming everyone but herself for our outrageous inflation rise. Nope. She's actually taking the pages of Hugo Chavez's playbook. And I will work to pass the first ever federal ban on pr price gauging on food. <laughs> My plan will include new penalties for opportunistic companies that exploit crises and break the rules. I think that's gouging, not gauging. Well, maybe it was spelled wrong on our teleprompter. <laughs> but anyways, controlling prices like groceries, housing, education, saying the rich need to contribute more, just like in her own words, even though we all don't start from the same place, we should all end up at the same place, right? We have always fought for equality, but now we are also talking much more rightly about equity, understanding that we must be clear-eyed about the fact that yes, we want everyone to get an equal amount, that sounds right, but not everyone starts out from the same place. Some people start out on first base, some people start out on third base. And if the goal is truly about equality, it has to be about a goal of saying everybody should end up in the same place. And since we didn't start in the same place, some folks might need more. This is about equity. And whether or not we are truly committed to the principles of equity in every way that we as government and as a society can enforce those important principles. That's right, equity. No matter if you try, no matter if you don't try, Everyone should succeed, no matter if you studied or if you didn't study. Everyone should get that A on the report card. Well, that's her meeting of equity. Now back to her financial plan. Basically, this penalizing of prices for your groceries takes away the free market that helps the economy grow and puts it into the hands of the government, which kills the economy. Just ask the people of Venezuela, Cuba, the former Soviet Union. It's not the grocery stores that are price gauging, I mean gouging. It's the government spending trillions of dollars on useless programs and useless regulations, which can make prices skyrocket, which is what we've been seeing since 2020. How do you think the food gets to the markets? They don't just magically appear like in the back room, the producing room or something. It all comes from farmers and manufacturing plants. And these farmers use fuel to plow, plant, pick, you know, the three Ps, and then transfer their food to the markets, which means it costs them more to produce their food due to the high cost. So they have to fluctuate their prices to coincide with their price of production. Grocery stores aren't price gouging anything. They're hurting us just as much as you and I. The average profit for a grocery store receives about one and a half cents per dollar. The free market, even though it's always hated by the left, 
is the best market on this planet. It's what made this great country the richest and strongest country in less than 150 years. But Harris doesn't just want to go after so-called big grocery. She also wants to give away more of your money. And I will work as president with states like here in North Carolina, Roy Cooper, thank you again, to cancel medical debt for more and more, millions more Americans. So let's see, pay off your medical debt, student loan debt, so much free stuff. Well, free to the receiver until they got to start paying pa taxes too. I wonder what else you can come up with to spend your tax dollars on. We also know that as the price of housing has gone up. Hold on there, Miss Vice President Kamala Harris. <laughs> uh, she seems to have forgotten or didn't want to remind anybody back, you know, around 2020, 2021, the plywood incident going from you know, four hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars for a thousand square feet. You know, roughly about uh, thirteen. You know, just for one sheet of plywood, you know, going from thirteen dollars to fifty dollars. You know, don't forget about that, Kamala. Continue. The size of down payments have gone up as well. Even if aspiring homeowners save for years, it often still is not enough. So in addition, while we work on the housing shortage. I know I keep stopping, but I, I, I can't help it. Shortage? Housing shortage? Didn't know we were short on houses. Okay. I see a lot of houses for sale. Don't know about you, but I've never seen a shortage of houses. My administration will provide first-time home buyers with $25,000. <laughs> to help with the down payment on a new home. You think homes are expensive now? Wait till you see what that would do to home prices. It seems every four years, the two sides, you know, Republicans and Democrats, grow more and more apart. Democrats want to always spend, spend, spend. They see a problem, they throw money at it. Doesn't matter what the problem is or how the problem occurred, just throw more money at it. Doesn't matter who it is. Hugo Chavez, Fidel Castro, Karl Marx, Kamala Harris. Socialism, or better yet, communism, does not work. You don't see people fleeing to Venezuela. You don't see people fleeing to Cuba. And you don't see people fleeing to North Korea. No, you see people fleeing from these countries to another country like the U.S. of A. But if this is a capitalist nation of almost... 250 years turns the way Kamala wants us to turn. We will not recognize this nation. You might say, ah, oh, this can't happen to us. We're too big of a country. America isn't too big to fail. No, it's not. And if we do fail, the whole world will feel it. Now let's see what her own side feels about her new economic plan. She talked about the profits of grocery stores. Their margins are incredibly thin. For every dollar sale, they make profits of around one to three cents. Just try proving that their price gouging is going to be incredibly difficult beyond anything else. On housing, she said at the end of her first term, she hopes to have those three million houses built. But in order to do that, a lot of these home builders, and they are saying that they'll provide incentives, they're going to have to borrow money. And we know interest rates are really high. So a lot of that's going to depend on mortgage rates coming down, which could end up fueling house prices even higher if people start buying. But it also would be very bad for markets. We've seen this kind of thing tried in lots of other countries before. Venezuela, Argentina, the Soviet Union, etc. It leads to shortages. It leads to black markets. Um, you know, plenty of uncertainty. Well, it seems even some of her own team players aren't too keen on this socialist, communist, financial policy that Kamala wants to put in place. Since Biden-Harris administration has been in power, everything has gone up. Fast food up almost 24%, rent 22%, fuel over 50%, car insurance over 54%, Groceries up to 24%, electricity, and all these you know, electric car owners love this, 
up almost 32%, pet food, 24%, natural gas, almost 25%, and food for your little kiddos, over 30%. It's not a pretty picture. Just put this into concept. If Kamala is our next president at the end of her four-year term, the prices we have today will be wished upon because they'll be two, three, four, even more times higher than now. We'll be saying, man, I wish prices were like they were back in 2024. But I guess it doesn't matter what the cost of food will be if we don't have much at all, or if any, to even purchase. <laughs> you know, that mean yellow man with the mean tweets that has that weird running mate sure is looking better day after day, isn't he? Get the word out. Be Paul Revere. You have no idea how many people have no clue as to who Kamala Harris really is and what the Biden-Harris administration has done the past four years. Here's a survey of 1,200 registered Democrat and independent Biden voters, a MRC poll. Only 14% out of this 1,200 uh, Democrats and independents knew that Harris would consider allowing death row inmates to vote. Only 19% knew that Harris supported the elimination of private health care insurance. 22% were aware of Harris promoting a fund to bail out violent protesters during those 2020 riots in Minneapolis. Only 23% knew that she supported the ball that was ICE. 25% uh, knew that Harris was named the most liberal U.S. Senator in 2019. And 26% Harris said it should not be considered a crime to enter the U.S. illegally. Only 27% knew that Harris co-sponsored the Green New Deal. And she's still pushing for it. Only 28% knew that Harris never visited a conflict zone and the border as border czar. Only 29% knew that Harris supported cutting funds for the police, you know, defund the police. The less police, the less crimes is her idea. And only 29% knew that Harris supported reparation payments to atone for slavery in the U.S. So in conclusion, I'd like to say, it seems I can't say it enough. Share this information. Save this great nation from the deep grip of the Democratic Party. Left-wing media is not going to do it, so it's up to the American people. Thank you, and have an awesome day.